Hi everybody. Today we're gonna make iron bleed in pain. All we need is iron, potassium dicyanate, sulfuric acid, and hydrogen peroxide. Now there are a few other stuff you need. One is a well ventilated area since it will liberate some toxic diocyanic acid vapor. Two, you'll also need sodium hydroxide and a filter, so that will be used for disposal. But let's just look at the reaction in general, but we'll all go over the disposal too. The first reaction is between the iron and the sulfuric acid. The iron is oxidized by the sulfuric acid to its constituent ions, iron 2 and iron 3. This also liberates lots of hydrogen, which is highly combustible, so you have to be careful with this guy too. However, we want the iron 3 sulfate, which is right here. This is because the bloody red complex will form as iron 3 diocyanate. However, Unlike its older brother iron 3, iron 2 does not want to stick with iron other diacyanate ions. However, iron 3 would gladly accept 3 diacyanate ions to form a blood red iron 3 diacyanate complex. Next, if there are any acidic protons left in solution, the hydrogen peroxide in iron 2 will react it with it to form this equation. H2O2 plus 2H plus plus 2FE2 plus equals 2FE3 plus plus 2H2O. Just to get a preview on what we'll see next, let's see if the equation is balanced. Well, we have two oxygens because 2 times O and O2. We also have four hydrogens, one, 2 times 2 is 4, two hydrogens, and another two hydrogens. We also have two ions, two, two. And now let's see if it's balanced with respect to charge. Well, these two protons together will be two plus, these two ions together will make four plus. This iron, you know, ions will make six. These two come together and make six plus. So the equation is balanced as follows. Then, the iron 3 that is now produced will form the iron 3 diacyanate. And now this is a reaction we have to be careful on. Diacyanic acid is a weak acid, it is a pretty strong acid, but it is also pretty weak because it is a quite strong compared to other weak acids, but it isn't, but it isn't in the strong acid range. In other words, it is less acidic than a hydronium ion. Therefore, its ions will accept protons to form thiocyanic acid. Thiocyanic acid vapors are highly toxic, and this is why you should do this in a well-ventilated area. Now, for the disposal reaction, it will go as follows. The sodium hydroxide will react with the iron 3 in solution to form iron 3 hydroxide. The hydroxide is highly insoluble in water and will precipitate out as a solid. This will replace the sodium ions in the place of iron to form sodium thiocyanate, which is much safer. Now, let's move on to the experiment. See you there! Hi, welcome to the experiment. As I said in the explanation, we will need hydrogen peroxide, sulfuric acid, iron, and potassium diocyanate. <clears throat> but for disposal, prepare a solution of sodium hydroxide. For our first step, we gotta dissolve our potassium diocyanate. Seems like it all dissolved. Now, let's add our hydrogen peroxide. 
As I've said in the explanation, hydrogen peroxide will function as an oxidizing agent to turn iron 2 into iron 3. Now remember, sulfuric acid is highly corrosive and poisonous, so I don't recommend doing this at home. In our solution, let's dip the iron nail. Mm. Very quickly, the nearby solution is turning red due to what happened in the explanation. Remember, do this in a well-ventilated area because there may be toxic diacyanic acid fumes. Did you enjoy it? The iron is now bleeding for Halloween. Now note the fact that you should not use this in any type of decoration as thiocyanates are highly toxic. Now for the disposal, let's repair our sodium hydroxide solution. Now that our solution is prepared, let's pour it into our bloody solution. This will replace the sodium into solution from a sodium thiocyanate. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in our next chemistry experiments. Bye!